Hey guys, <clears throat> it's been a little bit. I thought I'd uh, catch up with you guys, something that's been on my head and my heart. Um, and that's the topic of gossip. Now, the spin I'm going to put on gossip with this uh, Drive Time devotional today is not what we typically think of as gossip, where you're talking about someone behind their back, or even cloaking it in, uh, I need, um, need to know more so I can pray intelligently about this, that sort of thing. The kind of gossip that I'm going to be addressing today is just simply passing around hearsay. Passing around and uh, reporting on information that cannot be verified. And this is in light of in particular a pet peeve of mine and that is conspiracy theories. Um, I do believe that there are things that are happening in this world that we know nothing about. That there are governments or organizations that are doing things behind the scenes for their own benefit regardless of how it impacts the rest of society. I believe that. That's the way it's always been. We have but to look at history and see that having played out in so many instances, whether as recently as um, what went on in Germany during World War II with the Holocaust, um, going further back with other things that have happened throughout history. There are things, uh, puppet organizations, so to speak, that have um, been engaged in sinister um, plots. There's no question those things have happened. But not everything is a bugaboo. Not everything is a bogeyman. Not everything is a conspiracy theory. Just because something cannot be explained doesn't mean that there's some shadow government or shadow organization behind it. And for whatever reason, Christians seem to be some of the worst at perpetuating these myths. These conspiracy theories. Um, particularly those of a um, denominational background or even a, um, not necessarily denominational, but a paradigm such as a lot of our charismatic brothers and sisters. Um, they, they see the Masons behind everything. They see the Ca Roman Catholic Church behind everything. Um, these groups of people seem to succumb to conspiracy theories. And again, it can't be substantiated, there's no evidence to support it, but they still promote it and propagate this misinformation. Now, granted, there are some of these things that, honestly, only time will tell. But when time tells, are they going to backpedal? Are they going to apologize for spreading disinformation? No, they won't. They'll just look for something else to try and glom onto to explain it away or to push it further down uh, on in the timeline of our Earth's um, remaining time. Um, this is the problem, though. It is just as much bearing false witness as lying about someone in particular. To perpetuate and to propagate misinformation when you have no evidence to support it is just as much a lie and just as damaging because people get sucked into it, and it ends up being simply fear-mongering, making people live in anxiety. When Scripture plainly says, <clears throat> excuse me, that we should be worried for nothing, we need to trust that God is in control. And if things start happening the way that a lot of these people will say that it's going to happen, and quite honestly, things that even the Bible itself specifically says is going to happen prior to Christ's return, um, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. And quite honestly, there are some things that we should not do anything about. Should we stand up for the right? Absolutely. Should we stand up for what is moral? Absolutely. Should we stand up for our freedoms? particularly here in America, but human rights should be championed all around the world regardless of the culture that, that people find themselves in. And Christians should be right at the forefront of promoting individual rights, human rights, civil rights, no matter where we might find ourselves. 
but there's going to be some things that happen that they have to play out that way. Um, not necessarily because God ordained them, but because God has already seen that they are going to happen that way. And He has given us some warning concerning these things. Now again, going back, with that being said, promoting conspiracy theories and pointing fingers <clears throat> and telling people to start hoarding things, like the whole Y2K thing. I'll never forget that. I was going to a church at the time. Um, a church that I grew up going to. <clears throat> and the pastor preached a sermon concerning Y2K. And his sermon was, Don't worry. God is in control. Now there was a enclave, to use the conspiracy theorists, uh, one of their favorite terms, there was an enclave within that church that was really, really into the whole hoarding stuff. You know, hoard the water and, and hoard canned goods and build this and do this and get a generator for this because when Y2K hits, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. But when he was preaching this sermon, summing it all up by telling us that we don't have to worry, that we are in God's hands and we can trust Him, um, Myself and a couple of other friends were sitting towards the back, and we were shouting hearty amens throughout the entire sermon. And I had a lady come up to me afterwards, and she was livid. She was so angry because she was one of the lunatic. I mean, she was one of the conspiracy theorists. And she shook her finger in my face and said, "When all these bad things happen, and people are dying because of Y2K." Their blood is going to be on your hands and his hands for preaching that sermon and making people not aware of what's going to happen. And here it is 2015, 15 years later, and nothing happened. I'll let that sink in a little bit. I haven't seen the woman since. I hope she still has all those canned goods. She, hopefully she burned through them, maybe, by this time. Because she was hoarding it, big time. Now, my point is, is that, yes, we need to warn people about things that are impending. Particularly when it comes to their salvation and accepting Jesus before it's too late. But you know what? My Bible tells me that everyone is going to have a reasonable opportunity to be able to give an intelligent yes or no answer to Jesus, whether to accept him or not. And it's the church's duty to present Jesus to a world, and then the decision is theirs. You know what I'm saying? So scaring people into hoarding things, scaring people into voting for this person or not voting for this person, scaring people into not buying this or not buying that, scaring people with talk about computer chips in your forehead or your right hand, scaring people with military um, practices that are going across the nation, uh, does absolutely nothing but scare people. And you know what? Jesus doesn't want people to be scared into his arms. He wants people to be to run into his arms out of love, not out of fear. Because if someone is driven into the arms of another person out of fear, that connection will only last so long before it's separated and the relationship is no longer. Propaganda can go both ways. Whether it's people from the right, people from the left, people who are religious, people who are not religious. Propaganda is just that. Propaganda. Promoting your paradigm whether there's any evidence to support it or not. And I will go ahead and I will say it this way. It is bearing false witness when you present information that can't be verified and substantiated. And that makes it a sin. Just as surely as killing someone, sleeping with somebody else's spouse, stealing, taking God's name in vain, bowing down before an idol, coveting, dishonoring your parents, breaking the Sabbath. It's a sin. It's a sin. So, 
just think on that. I'll probably get a bunch of feedback. I already have about some things that I've posted on Facebook. So, but that's okay. I want to make people think and stop being sheep. So, hope you guys got something out of this. Hope it made you think. And if it made you mad, sorry. Anyway, let's pray. Father, thank you once again for this day. Thank you for your great love. Father, thank you for the assurance that we can have as your children that no matter what happens, everything is going to be fine in the end. We as your children, we have your book. And a peek at the back of the book, we know how this all ends. And all's well that ends well, as the saying goes. Again, Father, thank you for loving us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I hope you have a great day. And think, think, think. For crying out loud, think. Love you all.